Welcome back to Intro to Physical Anthropology. This is David Leitner. I'm your instructor. And this week we are going to talk about Acheulean tools. Um, the Acheulean tool industry comes on the heels of the Aldewan industry, which was the first stone tool industry. Uh, and it is remarkable for a number of reasons. Um, the complexity involved actually we can make some inferences from what it would take mentally to create these tools to infer some things about um, the minds of the hominins who made them as well. Uh, and so let's see what I mean by that. Let's get started. Okay, so some basics to start with. The Shulian industry lasted from about 1.6 million years to about 250,000 years ago. Um, it was made by not just um, Homo erectus, but several later uh, species of Homo as well. Um, it comes on the heels of the old one industry, like I said. Uh, very interestingly, though, uh, it consists of two main tool types, as I'll point out in a little bit. The one on the left here is known as a hand axe. There are some parts of the world where the hand axe doesn't show up, uh, and we are uncertain why that is. Uh, and we call the line that separates these two parts of the world the Movius line. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, uh, but it is clear from sites like Dominici, where there are no Acheulean tools, that the Acheulean industry is developed at some point after the first time uh, Homo erectus leaves Africa. Okay, the Acheulean tools uh, come in two flavors. You've got your teardrop-shaped thing on the left here, that's a hand axe, and the cleaver uh, on the right is has a sharp edge around uh, most of its sides, but not, not on the top. And you hold that thing kind of like this to either chop or to slice with it. Uh, much like a cleaver, really. Um, they are both biface. That means that they have a sharper edge. They're worked on each side instead of just one side. If you work on one side, you get a shape that looks sort of like that, right? But if you sort of um, work it on both sides, you have a thinner uh, edge on it. Uh, it makes the tool lighter. It also makes it more effective. Um the really interesting thing about these hand axes is they're basically Swiss army knives. They have a, they have a, an edge all the way around with a continuously varying, um, angle here. Some areas are rounder. So they're good for like scraping things that have sort of a curve to them. Others are flat. Others are come to a point. Um, there's some speculation they may have been used for digging as well, uh, chopping, uh, slicing, dicing. It's like, uh, it, yeah, it's, uh, you guys won't remember the old Ron Popeil commercials, but, uh, but it does everything. Um, the neat thing here though, is that everywhere these are found, they have the same shape this teardrop pattern. They may change in size, but they always have that shape, which means when the person was hitting the stone, they had a shape in mind. They had an intent to make that. They weren't just hitting randomly until they got an edge, uh, which may have been the case for some of the old one tools. They were hitting to get a shape. They wanted to create something out of an amorphous stone. Uh, and, What's even more, it's not a technique, it's not a one-step technique. You have to work it on both sides, yeah. But then you come back through and counterintuitively, you take the hammer stone and you rub it on the edge, dulling it purposely. Um, and then you come back with a soft hammer, like, a, like wood, bone, or um, antler, right? And... When you hit with those, you by flattening the surface a little bit, dulling the surface, you increase the fail point um, of the of the material, so that you can actually apply more pressure 
uh, before it breaks, which means that the flake is going to be longer and thinner. It's going to take, it's going to, instead of flaking off uh, at an angle like this, it'll flake off at an angle like that. Uh, and go much further, which means you remove, you both make it sharper and lighter at the same time. So they go around to do that, the second step of the process. A after they rough out the shape, they come through, uh, rough it up, and then retouch it. Um, what it also means is that it's a tool that can get resharpened, even if you're out in the field. You're out in the field and it stops being as effective, you can just with the tools you have at hand, go through and sharpen it and make it better again. Uh, which means it lasts a long time, too. Um, they're a Swiss Army knife because it's not clear people had clothes. So they weren't carrying around bags or pockets or anything like that. Um, so you got to carry everything you need while you're out there. This thing does that. This is a Swiss Army knife. Now, that uniformity signals uh, standardized and specialized uses. Uh, as I said, it holds a sharp edge longer. Uh, it is a convenient size, so there's less fatigue when working with it. Uh, it can be sharpened. And if you're coming across large animal carcasses like zebra or... Um, uh, or wildebeest, or elephants, or whatever might be out there, um, rhinos, that sort of thing, uh, you can use this to butcher it very quickly, because it's got a long cutting edge on it, whereas try to do it with like a little pen knife, it's going to take you a while. Um, but um, uh, they were definitely, we find plant material on some of them, indicating they were used for scraping or... Uh, or processing plant material in some way. Uh, my favorite theory that I think is complete poppycock, but I love talking about it because it's so preposterous, is there's an experimental archaeologist who found out that if you throw them sort of like a discus, you know, uh, they come down most of the time at a 45-degree angle with the point down. And so he speculated that um, early humans would surround a herd uh, and then just all launch these things at the same time. And you're bound to hit something if you do that, right? I think that's a horrible waste of something that took so much energy. It's very likely to break if you do that. Um, I think that's, it's, I think it's the least plausible idea I've ever heard actually of these, but it's so amusing. Uh, and it's interesting that if you throw it like a discus, it comes point down all the time. Like that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't think they were used as projectiles, but they definitely were used for butchering and for processing plants. Okay, this Movius line then. Um, we've hit, covered what these things are. Um, the Movius line tells us where they are. Now, uh, we find hand axes in Europe, in Africa, most of the Middle East, and parts of South Asia, including India. We do not find it in Indonesia, Malaysia, the Southeast Asia, Asia. We don't find them there. Now, why is that? Um, it could be that they had the Acheulean industry and lost it. That's a possibility. It could be that perishable materials like bamboo were more efficient and more effective and more plentiful, frankly, uh, than these hand axes. Bamboo is an extremely versatile material that won't hold up in the archaeological record for very long. Uh, so if they were making tools out of bamboo, we wouldn't expect to find very many of them. Uh, the other thought is that maybe they left Africa before the Acheulean industry and it just never caught up to them. That's a little harder because although there are no hand axes, occasionally we do find other Acheulean tools in there mixed in, so that's a harder one to, to accept. I personally think it's probably a combination of those first two. Uh, but, like I say, there is a lively debate in the in the profession going on right now, a legitimate debate about all of these. Uh, want a doctoral thesis? Solve this. <laughs> uh, 
Um, as I said, though, the Alduan never completely goes away, and the Acheulean almost never completely goes away either. So that's it for the Acheulean industry. In my next video, I'm going to talk about another tool uh, that was used uh, alongside a um, uh, alongside this new behavior of going out and getting animal proteins. How did they do it? What what was the nature of what they were doing? Were they hunters? Were they scavengers? What were they actually doing? And how might they have done it? Uh, so for now, though, thank you very much for coming. Uh, take care of yourself. Have a great week. And I will see you soon.